Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm your host, Jeffrey, and subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. Now, the national championship game in 2023 in college basketball is over, and UConn has won their fifth national title, and the UConn Huskies have sparked a lot of debate online. Are the Huskies a blue blood program in college basketball, or are they not just yet? Now, looking at UConn, what they have done the last 25 years, since 1999 now, winning five national titles, four with Jim Calhoun, even though one was technically through Kevin Ollie, even though it was with Jim Calhoun's players, and he was out with an illness, and he had to end up retiring, and now Dan Hurley's won another one. A lot of people are questioning, is UConn a blue blood? I think that looking at the national titles debate, for sure, UConn is by far a blue blood, because a lot of people are now saying that you have to have five national titles to be a blue blood. And you're looking at programs like UCLA. They have 11 national titles. And a lot of people talk about UCLA. Are they still a blue blood because they haven't won a national title since 1995? They did all of their damage mostly during the John Wooden era, which was back in the 60s and 70s. So it was a long time ago. But UCLA has the pedigree. And if you look at UCLA's all-time wins, UCLA has won 1,986 games. So they're almost at 2,000 wins. But they did start their program in college basketball 20 years later than most of the other programs and started playing basketball a lot earlier, so that hurts UCLA in the all-time wins department. But they had the national titles. And you look at Kentucky, they've won eight national titles, and the last time they won it all was in 2012. And Kentucky has the second most all-time wins in college basketball history with 2,375. That is really impressive. And Kentucky's definitely a blue blood as well. They don't have the factor of UCLA that they haven't won it in a long time. Yes, Kentucky's been down the past few seasons, but John Calipari still has Kentucky toward the top of college basketball. So they are by far a certain certified blue blood along with UCLA. You look at Duke, they have five national titles. Their last one was in 2015, but all of them are by Coach K, which some people debate about the fact that Duke doesn't have any more wins way back in the past, so are they technically a blue blood? But I think Duke definitely is as well. They have 2,273 wins, the fourth most all time, and they've had a lot of success in college basketball, so Duke is definitely a blue blood. North Carolina, the rival of Duke, is six national titles. The last in 2017, they had some championships under Roy Williams and Dean Smith. North Carolina's had a lot of success, and they had the third most wins all time with 2,343. They've had so much success. So Carolina is definitely a blue blood. Now you got to look at the benchmark of the five national titles. Kansas only has four national titles. So some people are like, is Kansas a blue blood? But yes, Kansas has the most all-time wins with 2,385. No one has as many wins as the Jayhawks. Yes, they started playing basketball a lot earlier than a lot of other programs, but still Kansas is a blue blood. They only have four national titles, but Bill Self has won two in the last 15 years. And I think that Kansas is definitely a blue blood based on the all-time wins. What they've done to create college basketball with James Nosmith being the head coach of Kansas. All that more makes Kansas a blue blood for sure. And then you look at Indiana. They have five national titles as well. They're the only other program that fits this description. They haven't won a title since 1987, so they kind of fit into the description of UCLA. But Indiana is just a powerhouse program throughout history. They've had so much success with Branch McCracken and Bob Knight. They have 1,913 wins, which is a little bit less than the other teams, but I still think Indiana is a blue blood. They've done enough. They need to start getting their act together really soon. And I think that Indiana right now with Mike Woodson is trending in the right direction again. So potentially Indiana could retain their blue blood status. But those are all the programs that can be considered a blue blood based on all-time wins and based off of national title results. Because you look at Villanova, they have three national titles. And they won it last in 2018 with Jay Wright. And they have 1,864 wins. So they have fewer wins than these other programs. They don't have the five national titles, or at least four like Kansas does. Villanova's done a really good job the last few years with Jay Wright, but he's gone now. Will Villanova continue to be a top program? Villanova is really close to Blue Blood stats, but they're not there. And Michigan State has 1,811 wins, so even less than Villanova. Only two national titles, and they won their last one in 2000 with Tom Izzo. So Michigan State's a great program, and again, on the fringe of Blue Blood stats, but they're nowhere near Kansas, Kentucky, North Carolina, UCLA, Duke, and Indiana in all-time wins or national titles as well. But UConn's the one entering that fringe territory because now UConn has five national titles. They've done it with three head coaches, technically two if you want to be technical with Jim Calhoun and Dan Hurley, but you also had Kevin Ollie as well getting the job done with Jim Calhoun's players. So since 1999, they've won five national titles. They've won every single time they've been in the national title game as well, which really helps out the Huskies. Indiana had a lot of success in national titles as well, not losing many. I think that's another big reason that helps out Indiana. They have not been to a lot of titles and lost. UConn's been dominant when they've gotten there. 
and UConn's a program trending in the right direction again. But what hurts the Huskies is they only have 1,798 wins, which is far less than all of the other programs on this list, even fewer wins than Michigan State. So that's a really interesting argument there. And also you can look at that pre-1999, UConn wasn't a great program, which is why their all-time wins are lower. They've had some success in the past in the Big East, but really they're just a program that has been really good the last 25 years. Now that kind of gets into the argument, is UConn a new blood? Are they just a pro? program that's had a lot of success lately and they're not a blue blood a program that's been great historically throughout all time I think Villanova has that argument as well because they're a kind of a new blood in the fact that they've had a lot of success recently even Gonzaga even though they haven't won a national title they're kind of a new blood in the fact that before Mark Few they weren't a really good program Baylor as well with Scott Drew it can go on and on but I do think looking at all these results the all-time wins and the fact that they've now entered the rare air territory of five national titles one more than Kansas who could be considered the most blue blood program of all time and the fact that they have the most all-time wins, but they only have four national titles. But now you have UConn entering the territory of Duke and Indiana with five national titles. That's so important. And North Carolina with six, Kentucky with eight, and UCLA with 11. Even though UConn is lacking in other areas like total all-time wins and Elite Eight appearance and all these other metrics that these other programs have, I do think that UConn is now entering blue blood territory. They can be considered a blue blood. If you want to call them a new blood, I get it. It makes a little bit more sense. A lot of people are calling UCLA and Indiana the old bloods because they haven't been good in a long time, but it's that historical fact of that weight of Indiana and UCLA that just really drags it apart from all these other programs that they are blue bloods, but you can definitely say that they're the old bloods. A lot of people right now are just saying that Kentucky, Duke, Kansas, Carolina are the blue bloods, but if you want to talk about recently, for sure, UConn is a blue blood, but if I had to say right now, my blue blood list is UCLA, Kentucky, Duke, Kansas, North Carolina, Indiana, and now UConn entering the fray based on what they've done. They need to get better in the all-time wins, but if Dan Hurley can keep ratcheting up great seasons in the future, then UConn will be able to take care of that situation. I think they're going to keep having success in the future, but I think those are the blue blood pro programs. A lot of people will argue which ones are the true blue bloods. Again, for sure, Kansas, Kentucky, Carolina, and Duke are above the rest. But I do think you still got to give a lot of credit to UCLA and Indiana. And now UConn for what they've done. But the Huskies have been great the last 25 years. They're definitely a new blood. But I do think they have entered the rare territory of being considered a blue blood with Villanova and Michigan State right on the outside. So for the Huskies, this is a great accomplishment getting their fifth national title and getting to enter Blue Blood status. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Comment down below whether you think UConn's a Blue Blood and which teams you consider as Blue Bloods in college basketball and what metrics and categories you determine for your reasonings of why a team is a Blue Blood. Follow me on Twitter as well, and I will see you next time.